If you thought I wasn't going to make a video about this, you were sorely mistaken. Of course I know what's going to happen. I've been waiting for it for three years, and I'm actually going to do something with it. But right now, this is only tangential. It, it only sort of relates to what I have to talk about. And I'm kind of disappointed that these aren't getting more attention. I guess I should post in more groups or get more well-connected friends or something like that. But uh, I already made a version of this video, but it was much too long and it was pretty much just for testing. And now I already know everything works. So here we go. This is, this is the front shell of an 8-bit music power cartridge. And I'm sure a few of you know that it doesn't work for everybody uh, and most of that comes down to the construction of the board that it was made on and these two chips these two ROM chips are 3.3 volts and of course the Famicom runs on 5 volts and I'm not sure exactly what the issue is with these but the I guess there's something going on with the timing of the ROM access so they had to uh, add these capacitors on the back, and that's just not enough. So people have to modify their cartridges to get them to run on some versions of the Famicom. I'm not saying it did, but it might have at least contributed to, you know, my first Famicom's PPU blowing. Maybe the work RAM is out, that's why it still doesn't work, because I know the PPU was good. I have I've no idea. But this cartridge has been a constant source of problems for me. And, you know, an intermittent sort of problem for other people, you know, if they really wanted to get it to work, somebody modded it, they got it modded, they modded it themselves, it doesn't matter. But still, this board, to be frank, is shit. So, Kita Kita Star Knight, 2016, KKSNDX, finally released. Of course I'm gonna get it. I look at the Amazon link and I pre-order the Amazon version, you get free wallpapers. And it says on the bottom of the page that it will that it may not work on all Famicoms, and I can guarantee you that it will not work on all Famicoms. So I and a member of the Famicom World Forum, who goes by the name of Jensma, got together and made some replacement uh, TL ROM boards because this is this is TL ROM. It is two ROMs and the MMC3. So we got together and made a replacement TL ROM board for 8-bit music power that has the correct the correctly positioned mounting holes I just realized that I was putting everything in the wrong position the correctly positioned mounting holes and you can't see it but still this is a TL ROM and uh, we made these so that anybody who has a cartridge that doesn't work can 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 buy one and I'm just I originally wasn't going to charge for them but I had to you know reorder a batch because I got the measurements for the holes on the bottom here wrong so that was my fault I did a stupid and actually just try to refocus you idiotic piece of shit there or so oh Jesus Christ whatever there these are the TL ROMs I've been going on for three minutes with this thing out of focus but yeah it requires it does it does need a real MMC3 and I've already made two of these cartridges up this one is mine and I made one up for my friend. In the original uh, construction of it, I ended up breaking a trace. So that didn't make me too happy. But um, yeah, these work 100% correct. Unlike this piece of garbage, uh, this, you know, actually uses real Nintendo parts. It operates at the correct 5 volts. It has the two, the two necessary capacitors. For a TL ROM, it is a real Nintendo TL ROM board. It just takes EEPROMs and has a different mounting scheme. And just to prove it, because I can, and I know some people will ultimately question me, again, here's the front shell of 8DMP. Put this in. ROMs facing to the back, again, just like a real Nintendo TL ROM board. Here's the back of the shell. Hopefully you don't squirm out of place while I'm putting this together. Eh. If you can put a Famicom shell together that quickly just by pushing it, something is wrong. Yeah, the shells are also not the best 
quality. They're not the most solid plastic. I think they're just ABS. Version 1 of KKSM. Pop this in. So yeah, they work. They are... There's not really much I can say. If you have an 8-bit music power cartridge that doesn't work, contact me anywhere. Uh, email me. ByteMusic at Yahoo.com B-Y-T-E uh, Twitter, if you have me on Facebook for some reason, uh, just contact me through Facebook, Famicom World Forum, uh, here on YouTube, just write a comment, anything. Let me know if you want one. Anywhere that I am, anywhere that you know that I am, let me know if you want one. I've got, like, 15 or 16 of these boards left over. I'm just going to move over. So this one's mine. I made one for my friend. One is going to Hong Kong. One is staying here in the U.S. One is going to Germany. So I've got like 15 or 16 boards left to give away. Well, to sell. They're going to be $4. $4 plus shipping to wherever. I w like I said, I wasn't originally going to order them, but I had to, you know, re- do the batch and then it would have been you know kind of a waste so now i'm just charging for one batch instead of making these like eight dollar boards to make up all my money but still you know they're cheap and yeah again yes you do have to supply your own mmc3 but honestly if i really i even ended up breaking a trace if i can get two cartridges put together and i can i can do you know mmc3 removal and replacement if if i can do that you probably can i used a radio shack soldering iron if i could do this with a radio shack soldering iron you can do it with your wellers or with your hot air stations or your whatevers it's not that hard honestly you can supply your own parts you can use any mmc3 game thankfully the cheapest ones are you know tl and tk rom these will run the original 2013 version of kira kira star knight but they have this weird issue where it starts at the end of a level and then just throws you into a black screen and then it works after you reset. So I think that does actually use work RAM, but it doesn't need it. So once KKSN DX is released, I'll probably be getting back together with Jensma and we'll be making new boards for that too. Those I probably won't charge for, so if you have a cartridge that doesn't work, just let me know and I'll give you one for free. So I guess that's done. Enough of my rambling, time to listen to some more chiptunes. <laughs> 